Um, a few weeks before he died, Mike Nichols hosted a screening of the movie The Good Lie, written by Margaret Nagel. <laughs> Nichols, a child refugee of war himself, said, the movie really got to me. I want to show it to my children. I first met Margaret in the green room of the Pasadena Playhouse. Our husbands were in a play together. As we grew closer, I began to find something about Margaret annoying. <laughs> this has been recounted in an article about her and written by, so I assume you haven't heard it. <laughs> Margaret was constantly coming up with brilliant ideas for movies and then looking for someone to write them. It wasn't working. Finally, I told her, I have bad news for you. I said, I think you're a writer, which means you're going to have to write these yourself. The very first script Margaret ever wrote was about Franklin Roosevelt. It was called Warm Springs. It eventually got produced, and it won a ton of awards. But before it got produced, she heard about an open assignment at Paramount about the lost boys of the Sudan. Her agent said it was going to be a long shot. She got the job. When Margaret's script went out to the Sudanese community, they were thrilled that a Sudanese woman had written it. That's how masterfully she captured their voice. We all know so much. You know, we know every terrible thing that happens in the world. But just knowing the atrocity has happened or is happening is not enough. It means nothing until someone can unlock our hearts, ignite our empathy, help us not to be so numb. Margaret Nagel didn't just write a script that informs us about the lost boys of the Sudan. She stepped into their story and pulls us in there with her until we reach that place where we meet ourselves. The good lie received a coveted A-plus cinema score. The only other films to receive that score this year were Selma and American Sniper. It's available on iTunes, Amazon, and Video On Demand. Hey, if Mike Nichols wanted his kids to see it, maybe you should check it out. It is with deep pride and admiration that I present the Paul Selvin Award which is presented to the WGA member whose script best embodies the spirit of civil rights and liberties to my brilliant, beautiful, courageous friend, Margaret Nagel. Oh boy, you guys, I did a rewrite of my <laughs> script. I was asking for, for, for tape out in the lobby. Anyway, um, when a story's a part of your life for over a decade, not only do you begin to inhabit the story, but the story inhabits you. And such was the case for me with The Good Lie. In 2004, I was hired to write a script about the Lost Boys of the Sudan, and it was because of this job that I joined the Writers Guild of America. Okay, um, and little did I know that at that time it would be, be because of my membership in this very guild, because of Paul Selvin himself, that this screenplay would even be able to be made. And I'll get that back to you in a minute. Now, how could I spend over a decade of my life trying to get a movie made? Well, maybe it's because I was born in Berkeley Maybe it's because I saw free speech on every corner when I was a kid going to the candy store, going to the playground. See, I believed. See, I believe in the power of film and TV to affect social and political change. Film is the one language in this whole world that we all speak. We speak story in this room, and story is able to reach people in a place that's beyond ideology, beyond politics, and beyond religion. Story unlocks the key to who we really are and how we're all connected to one another. So The Good Lie 
tells the story of a group of siblings who escaped during the genocide of the 1980s in South Sudan, walking hundreds of miles across the sub-Saharan desert. And they reach Kenya, where they live in a refugee camp for 10 years on five meals a week. This is all true. And if ever there was a group who was your tired, poor, huddled masses yearning to breathe free, these young people were it. So one of the largest resettlement programs in US history 4,000 lost boys were bought, brought to the United States of America. But then 9-11 happened, and the program was immediately shut down. Our immigration policy shifted overnight, and the rest of the boys were left in the refugee camp in Kenya, where they remain to this day. Now, at the end of World War II, there were 50 million displaced people on this earth, and we found a home for them. But right now, in 2015, we have 52 million displaced people from war and conflict around this planet, and they have nowhere to go. The average stay is 17 years in a refugee camp for a displaced person, and that is too long. So, the good lie. To share this story with the world became my sole obsession I felt a tremendous responsibility to the people of South Sudan, but after dozens of drafts, changes in studio heads, and the untimely death of the project's original producer, Robert Neumeyer, the script was put into turnaround. But Paul Selvin, this union, like water in the desert, it saved this film from a fate of obscurity. By utilizing the WGA reacquisition rule, I was able to take an 18-month free option on my script, get it out of turnaround after a five-year waiting period. Thank you, Paul Selvin. I was able to set it up all over again with new producers, new financing, and only someone like Paul Selvin, who is a really cool dude, actually, when you learn about him. He cared so deeply about our Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and he created a safety net for writers to protect their work. Now, a script is just a bunch of pages without support and talent, and The Good Life found that in director Philippe Falardeau, producers Bobby Newmeyer, Molly Smith, Karen Kahala Sherwood, Ron Howard, and Brian Grazer, and the support of my agent, Kia Kiadian, who from, he's been there all the way through this long, long journey and Margaret Riley, my dear manager, and my lawyer, David Matloff, who worked this WGA rule. We got this, the check in for my scale plus 10 to Paramount to get this script out at 4 o'clock. They were closing at 5 on the, very, the 18th month, 30th day. I mean, it, that's how we got this script back. Um, and I have to thank my family, my husband, Ron Fassler, my children, Charlotte and Jeremy, who have grown up with the story of the Lost Boys all around them. Now, this film did not have the release it should have. It didn't have screeners sent out. But the humanitarian community has embraced the film and they're taking it out to the world. The International Rescue Committee screened it for the entire Congress. I spent last week talking to the State Department, people on immigration on a conference call for over 90 minutes, talking about our immigration policies. UNICEF is using the film to raise much needed aid for South Sudan. They're almost to a million. Enough Project, Oxfam, Refuge Point, Concern, Go Campaign, the Holocaust Museum, they're all using the good lie to raise awareness, to teach genocide, and to raise funds. It's been the greatest honor of my life to work on the good lie, to come to know and love the people of South Sudan. Two of them, the actors are here tonight, Gary Dewani, who played Jeremiah in the film. He was the first actor we saw 10 years ago. <laughs> Gare was not only a lost boy, he was a child soldier, and he just found his mom after 18 years. They didn't know that the, each other was alive. He just came back from Sudan. And the amazing Kuth Wheel, uh, who plays Avatar, our lost girl in the movie, she too is a child refugee of war. She was born in a refugee camp in Ethiopia. 
She came to the United States when she was five. She auditioned for us on her cell phone in the library at school. Lost boys and girls feel education is their mother and their father. It will speak for them as their parents cannot. And we had to really wrestle Kuth to leave school and do the film. She's remarkable. So the good lie, I don't know, and we as writers know, I want to say one last thing. Someone said that this business is mean on Friday at, or Thursday in a conversation up in San Francisco. But we're writers. We're not mean. We're smart. We're funny, we're courageous, we can be assholes, but we're not mean. And I feel so proud to be part of a group that includes compassion and the kind of world that we get to live in, that we get to embody these stories and tell them it's a privilege, it's an honor. I don't know that there will ever be another product in my life that will take me this far from home, only to create a home where my heart lives. I'm forever grateful to the Writers Guild of America, and to Paul Selvin. Thank you.